This video is about identifying anomalies and calculating means. So I've got a table of results here which looked at how the size of a beaker affected how long the candle burned for. So I did three tests and I now need to identify anomalies in my tests and then calculate an average. So to identify anomalies, first of all, what you need to do for each value of your independent variable, you need to have a look along the three tests to see if there are, there are any odd results. So an anomaly is a result that does not fit the pattern. So I'll just write that down here to help us. An anomaly is a result that does not fit the pattern. For example, in our first row here, we have results of 10 seconds, 23 seconds and 11 seconds. As you can see, the numbers 10 and 11 are very similar and this is completely different to the result of 23 that we've got. So I would circle this number 23 as an anomalous result. In the next row, I can see 14, 14 and 16. These results are very close to each other, so I've not identified anomalies in these results. For a 600 mil beaker, I get the results 22 seconds, 40 seconds and 24 seconds. In this case, 22 and 24 are very similar, whereas 40 I would identify as an anomalous result. For the 1000 mil beaker, we have the results 44, 45 and 46 seconds, all of which are very similar to each other so I can't identify any anomalies. And finally, for 2000, I have 73, 72 and 75. All those results are similar, so I won't identify any anomalies. Now, the important thing is now is that we do not include anomalies in our mean, OK, or our average, as you might have heard it. So anomalies are not included in the mean. What that means is we cannot include the number 23 or the number 20 or the number 40 when we calculate our means for our three results. So to calculate a mean, you add up your results and then divide them by how many results there are. So to calculate a mean, you add up the results and then divide by how many results there are. For example, in the first case, we are going to take the results 10 plus 11. And because we've taken two results, we need to divide that by 2. So if you take your calculator, you will need to do 10 plus 11 and then press the equals button. That's really important. And then because we've got two numbers up here, we divide by 2. And our average of those numbers is given at the moment on this calculator as a fraction. Now you will find that often if you use a scientific calculator like this. If you do, 
there's often a button that you need to press. In my case, I need to press this SD button here. SD. And if I do that, it will give me the decimal of 10.5. So in my averages column, I can now put 10.5. But actually, because my answers are whole numbers, I can round this one up to 11. So when you have the number after a decimal point, which is five or bigger, you round up to the nearest whole number. So I would write down my average as 11. So now we didn't need to do the average for this row. So we do 14 plus 14 plus 16 equals 44. Then divide by three, because this time we've used one, two, three numbers. And again, we get this fraction, so we need to use the SD button. And our answer is 14.6. Now, because the number after the decimal point is higher than five, we round up to an average of 15 in this case. For the next row, we've got to ignore our anomaly of 40. So we need to add up the numbers 22 and 24 and then press equals and divide by 2 because we've used two numbers and our answer is 23. And we'll double check, is 23 close to 22 and 24? Yes, it is. We've calculated it right. The next row down, we need three numbers, 44 plus 45 plus 46. Press equals and then we divide by three because we've used three numbers and our answer is 45 and finally for the bottom row we've got 73 plus 72 plus 75 press your equals then we've used three numbers again so we divide by three and we get a fraction again press the SD button and that will give us 73.3 now this case the 0.3 is less than 0.5 so we round down so we don't go up to 74 we go down to 73 so our average is going to be 73 so don't forget when calculating means or averages first of all you need to identify any of those anomalies and then calculate the mean along the rows if you get a decimal point, you round up to the nearest whole number. If you have a five or above after the decimal point, or you round down to the nearest number if you've got anything below five after the decimal point.